Welcome back to my garage. Last time I was struggling with the exhaust duct of my cylinder model in uh, Fusion 360 and I asked for help. An extreme amount of people have been offering their advice and sending me files and uh, coming with suggestions on how to solve this. And actually I just maybe a day or two after I posted that video I found a solution myself or my the way I was doing it uh, turned out to work after all. Uh, I, it turned out I was... Uh, the problem was I had been a bit sloppy with uh, projections. Projecting geometry from other sketches and bodies into the current sketch. By being a bit more thorough when projecting stuff, I made it work. A simple loft solution. I'll show you later in this video. I've made an enclosure for the 3D printer. Now, an enclosure is not needed for a PLA, but in this garage, which is not heated when I'm not here, and in the winter, when temperatures can reach to 20 degrees below zero Celsius, uh, enclosure, uh, some insulation from that the cold is needed. Speaking of the printer, I've realized that to be able to print a cylinder like I want it, with a water jacket around the transfers and the exhaust duct and, and with all the overhangs inside the ducts and in the water jacket. It's simply not possible without a dual extruder and printing with two materials and one of the materials being a soluble PVA plastic used for supports so that I can uh, dissolve the supports when the print is done. I will have to modify the ender with a second extruder and a different board and basically modify the whole thing to make this stuff work. Typical, typical of me. I, uh, if I had done a little bit more research before I bought this printer, I would have known I needed a dual extruder uh, printer. Actually, I would probably have used a little bit more money and bought an SLA printer and all my problems would have been um, fixed. This is something I really need to work on with myself. As an example, take the BMX bike I bought early this summer. Now the only thing left of that bike is the stem. The rest is parts I bought because the other original parts broke or I didn't trust them. I feared they would break. Had I done a bit of research before I bought that bike. I basically could have bought all these parts and just bought the stem, not the bike. <coughs> George McMurray and his son bought a few Arduino boards from me a while ago and they have sent me a gift or a George McMurray sent me a gift. So it's this guy. He's a land speed racer on the salt flats. That's uh, exciting. Wish there was some uh, salt flats here to do land speed racing on. And he sent me the two stroke tuners handbook by Gordon Jennings. Thanks, man. And this is actually the first and only physical copy of anything uh, two stroke related I own. First one. We'll have a special place in the garage and in my heart. Thanks man. I need to make a nice shelf to put it on and hopefully it will get some company. Thanks man. The kiln. It's finally sitting in the garage. Quite a feat to get it uh, from where it sat to here. It weighs, I don't know, maybe six, seven hundred kilos. It's uh, in fairly okay shape. There's missing a few of the um, of the element holding tubes things, and uh, I fear the elements are too far gone. I haven't been able to find any replacement parts, and the unit is uh, three phase. I think 5 kilowatts, which would have been fine if I had three phase into the garage. And uh, I can't afford hooking up three phase into the garage. 
I could rewire it for a single phase, but then it would draw maybe 20, 25 amps, and I don't have 20 or 25 amps into this garage. But it's rated to uh, a bit above a thousand uh, degrees Celsius. And I don't need any more than um, seven, eight hundred degrees Celsius. So I might just buy some uh, some custom elements and rewire it uh, to suit my 16 amp single phase breaker. I'll have to do some research. This time I'm going to do some research. It's a really nice unit. There's uh, elements in the door in the floor and on all three sides here so uh, very even heat yeah i have uh, i've sent a mail to the company this is from the 60s but they're still in business they haven't replied if i can't get a hold of them or if i can't get replacement elements and the parts i'll go the do-it-yourself route i'm also going to add on some uh, control circuitry so that I can hopefully be able to hold an even temperature for a long while and maybe do tempering of the cast parts. Yep. So this is going to be used for melting out the PLA and melting the aluminium before pouring. I'll bring you inside, show you the model I've been working on, which is a test model, but now I'm uh, pretty confident on the process. And then together we'll start on the actual cylinder model. It's the day after filming that last video and I was going to start editing it but then I realized a few things I had forgotten. First, I didn't mention the, the big print I did. It's a kind of a, a cylinder with uh, transfer ducts. Uh, I did this to test how it would behave, how the printer would behave on larger stuff and it worked okay but this print also made me realize I can't do this without soluble support material. Also I forgot to show you the test model I did in Fusion. So I successfully made a cylinder sort of how I wanted it. At least the process is down. So this model is what made me confident I can pull this off. I can model a cylinder in Fusion. Okay, on to the exhaust duct. I show you my method of designing the exhaust duct slash port first. And depending on how slow I'm working, I might start on designing the actual cylinder. And I'll start with the transfers. But first, let me show you how I managed to design the duct and port. I'm starting with a sketch on the bottom plane, a circle. This will become the the cylinder cutting tool like that and then I fuck I haven't yet found out how to uh, to recenter and have my view directly above the sketch without exiting and going into it again or actually I uh, wouldn't been a problem on this one because I could just push top here but on a different plane, a plane that isn't part of the origin, I have no clue. Okay, but anyways. Okay, first the 40 millimeter diameter circle, which will be the cutting tool. Then I add some construction lines. And I constrain them. This is important in Fusion. Like this, then I uh, construct a larger three-point circle, like this, and I constrain it, the center of it, to there. Now the point here is I am going to revolve, I'm going to construct a line here too. I'm going to revolve a sketch around the cylinder and then cut it to get the proper shape. I'll show you. Okay, so now I'm constructing another plane through this line. 
and I'm going to draw the sketch for the port on this plane. But first, I'll project the outer points of this, the bigger circle, into this sketch. Okay. And I'll add some construction lines. So the port will start 30 millimeters from the bottom and it will be say 20 millimeters high and the width of the bore because it's going to be a 100% of the bore so 40 millimeters and I'm going down to 20 there to mention that line Okay, it was. Yeah, I'm still screwing around here. <laughs> Anyways, that line is supposed to be. What? Okay, cancel. I'm not sure why this line isn't constrained. Maybe because it's not constrained to. Oh, it's the length, maybe? No. I'll delete it and uh, no, fuck. Like this, I'll delete it and re and draw another one from that one there. So it's probably because this line isn't. Oh, and why am I so ah, okay? Now I see this one is not supposed to be forty. And this one is not supposed to be there, and I'll just delete them all and start again. So as you've noticed, this is not a tutorial from a professional in uh, Fusion. This is me fooling around in the software. Okay, so now I'm at where I want to be. I'll draw another line here, and another one here, and another one here okay so the first line is where my arc is going to end the big arc from center of the bore out to the port edge and I'll dimension this one dimension that one to one millimeter and this one this is where the port the arc ends and there will be a radius for the port edge you'll see two millimeters and this is where the transfer ends or the transfer roofs are I'll just say uh, nine millimeters there okay enough construction I'll start with the arc three-point arc I'll make it tangent <coughs> tangent to the top there Okay, I'll draw a line down here as well, like that, and then I'll do a spline, control point spline, from there, no, I'll add some more construction, a line from there and out, okay, and I'll make that, why isn't it scrolling? Okay, sorry. What? So there's something wrong with my mouse wheel here, I think. No. Anyways, that thing tangent to that line. Like so. Then I'll create a control point spline. From there, and I'll make this constraint to that one. And uh, let's see here, from there maybe. And, this. and now I'm just creating uh, somewhat the shape I want. Okay, and I'll move these points around. 
to not have it exceed the bore 40 millimeters Let's see here I'm creating a shape of the port and this I will uh, modify later when the transfers are in there and I can uh, get things spaced properly okay so that's good enough for now and I see this one is construction so I'll just make it normal like so and now I have the port shape stop sketch stop sketch and uh, let's see here zoom out a bit okay so now I'm going to go into the patch environment and I'm going to extrude my cutting tool so then I'm going back to model model is solid bodies and patch is uh, surfaces so model because I want a solid body from this piece this sketch and I'll revolve this sketch around the center enter so the point the why I'm doing this cause I could I could have mirrored this sketch and then just extruded it into the cylinder or made a sketch that wasn't a sketch that was just as wide as the cylinder and then extruded into it to make the shape or I could have made a sketch on the center plane uh, the plane through the cylinder and just uh, lofted from this sketch the problem is that then I wouldn't be able to have the this top edge radius. Now this top edge radius will be transferred to the cylinder. Or I could make a top edge radius the shape I wanted, but then this uh, sketch would have been in a very strange shape. If that makes any sense. But anyways, revolve. So there I have my revolved body and I'll use the split body and I'll split this body with that body okay and now I have that body and this body and those are basically that's the cutting tool and the other ones are cutting tool too this one so now I have my body here no that body that's what I want okay so now I'm going to make the duct shape so I create a sketch on this plane and I'll wait because it's hanging and I'll project the lower and the upper point of the port there I'll create a Why isn't this scrolling? It's really annoying. Is that because it's fully expanded maybe? It was scrolling just a little strange. Okay, I'll have to find out how <laughs> how to fix this. But anyways, uh, construction line here, 90 degrees. So then a uh, normal line, 60 millimeters, that's the length of the duct to the narrowest point. I'll dimension this angle to be 25 degrees. So the main port roof, to call it that, even though this is just uh, one single port, will be 20 degrees downwards angled and the edges will have a slightly less angle, maybe 20 degrees. That's, um, that's how it's done in pre-port setups. So I'll just copy in that, I'm copying that. Okay, so now we have this line and I'm going to construct a plane along path. This line and just extend it all the way, extend it like so. And on this plane, I'm going to draw my duct exit shape so I'll create a sketch 
I know this is the top edge from my port. So I'll just remove that because it's a bit confusing. Okay, construction lines. We'll add uh, just a line here. So when I'm designing the actual cylinder, I'm going to make this part, the end of the duct, I'm going to make that uh, about 75% of the area of the port. But I, as I don't know what that will be uh, yet, I'm just going to make a shape and show you how I do it. So uh, 20 millimeters and 10 millimeters and a square like that. I mention it just to be on the safe side, like so. And I'll uh, make a spline shape here. Let's see. So. And uh, just uh, shape it roughly how I want it. Okay, I've constrained this. Let's see if I can make this work. No, I can't. Delete constraint. Nope. <laughs> so this is what I'm fighting with. I should really uh, go back and uh, learn how to. Like that. Yeah how to properly uh, control the program I'm I kind of jumped in at the deep end here so I can catch that constraint and delete it yeah okay so I'm just uh, creating a shape this looks pretty good I tend to forget I'm in construction so normal like so and I'll mirror this line like so so now I have the exit shape of my duct stop sketch no actually edit sketch I'm going to create another construction line going across here and I'm going to dimension that one to be say three millimeters down and this is to create points where I can uh, there's points to create a plane from the port I'll show you okay and I'm kind of paranoid not having the things uh, linking properly I'm not going to project now I'm going to create points so I'm creating a point here and a point there now it's hanging it's not the best computer and uh, now that I'm running the screen recorder simultaneously it's uh, struggling a bit okay so the sketch is done turn on the bodies again and I'm going to create a plane through the top edge of the port here and these two points so construct plane through three points make sure I hit the point and there and that one and that one okay now I'm going to create a sketch here and this is for the splines the shape of the port from here to here so first I'm projecting the points I'm going to use that's one point and another one there. let's see if I can that one and that one like so so now the my splines should link up with these points fine 
Now, <coughs> as this plane is not perfectly on top or bottom or uh, vertical, I have no clue how I can get back to the top view. I can kind of eyeball it, but not perfectly. So, as of now, I'm just stopping the sketch and going into edit mode again. Yeah. Okay, the splines. Control point spline. And no, wait. I'm going to do a bit of construction. I want the exit angle of the side of the port to be uh, 20 degrees. So I'll make a construction line here. So, and I dimension that angle to be 20 degrees. There, and then I'll exit construction. And now I can press X, but I forget. Spline, so control point there and so and another one and make sure to hit that point like so okay and I'll shape this spline the way I want it let's say something like this maybe, maybe a little less There, then I yeah, forgot another line here. Okay, and I'll mirror the spline. Mirror this thing with that line. No, that line. No, spline. Mirror. So okay. And now they should be connected on both sides. Both sides. Let's find out. I'll create yet another spline down here. Create because I want the port floor to raise up, and then uh, I want the port duct, the duct floor, to be raised. In the beginning here, actually very uh, close to the edge, but I'll show you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Uh, a spline. Spline, control point spline, control, sp control point spline. Mm, no. Projects. Projects. Um, projects. There. Okay. Spline. Control point spline. There. And I'll shape it. Now it's hanging there. I'll shape it. Kind of like so. Stop sketch. Okay, so now we have our port shape and the duct exit shape. So I'll create a loft. And now this is the point where it uh, usually fails for me. No. Make sure nothing else is selected. I'll select this face and that shape. Let's see what happens without any rails. So far so good. And I'll select that rail and that rail and this rail. And that rail. It looks pretty okay. Okay. So there you have it. I'll uh, hide this body. The exhaust, <coughs> the, ex the exhaust duct shape. So that's my method of uh, doing it. I'm really grateful for all the help you guys have been uh, giving me. And uh, I can see on the other side here, there's a very sharp something weird going on here. Hmm. Might have selected a spline too much there, I think. 
let's go back and see if we can fix that problem let's see here lofts that face and that face hanging there let's see what happens here if I select that rail okay that's okay and this rail still okay I think maybe I selected a rail as a profile last time you saw it if it happened that rail and that rail hmm so there is something strange going on here. Is that because of that rail maybe? Yep. That's pretty strange. I don't know if I can uh, change stuff here. Usually this doesn't work very well. No. Oh. Okay, connected. I'm curious to see why this happens it's obviously because of that rail I'm not sure exactly why that happens you know what let's uh, let's go in here and um, create actually I can edit this one no. sketch and add another spline here there and um, let's do a spline with a slightly different shape So, no, crap, spline, there, and like that, let's have that spline, let's have it to a slight curve down, a slight curve up, okay, so just a slight curvature in that spline. Stop sketch. Let's try the loft again. Loft. Those two. And it's hanging. There. Rails. Let's do this rail. And that rail. Nope. Um, it's kind of strange what's happening here. Maybe it's because I can't. Hmm. Maybe it's because this rail is in the middle, and it's interfering with with what's going on under here. That's a possibility. Let's just remove that rail and add in these ones again. Now it's uh, struggling, and that one, like so. so. The shape is fairly okay, uh, except for this bulge here. I think maybe I can fix it by doing a couple more rails. Hmm. Okay, that's uh, that's strange. Let's hook this one up again. Okay, so now it works. <laughs> That's even stranger. Maybe it's because of the... Yeah, it's probably because I did it in the wrong uh, order. So, now I know. Start with this one, then these two, and then the final one should be that one on top. Let's see if it's possible to use the straight rail now. No. That's not possible so that's strange that one works 
Yeah, okay. I'll have to figure out what's going on here. But anyways, the exhaust port shape and duct shape. Yeah, I think that will be it for now. Thanks for watching, and um, I'll see you next time. I uh, I think I'm ready to start on the actual cylinder. So uh, next time will be uh, will be mostly be about that. I think. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching.